Hello, everyone. Welcome to this special episode of the EUG podcast. I'm here with the Super Grand Slam champion, Cobrinha. Cobrinha, thank you for joining me today. Hector, pleasure. Thank you for having me here today. And I know that you don't give a lot of, uh, you know, do a lot of interviews or podcasts. This is very special, but we made it even more special because you're going to cook something up. That's correct. Today we're going to bake a cheese bread. Perfect. And then also while you're cooking, we're going to go ahead and hit a couple of topic, topics of your life. Okay, let's cool. go. I'm All excited right. for it. Perfect. So let's start it then, huh? All right. Let's go. All right, first I need to adjust this here really quick. So what are you making today? Cheese bread. Perfect. And this uh, this cheese bread is special in Brazil? It's very special in Brazil. It's uh, a special recipe that uh, when you go to a Fogo de Chão, whatever you know, uh, a Brazilian restaurant, you go here in the United States as well, you, they serve that uh, cheesecake. Okay. Not cheesecake, cheese bread, sorry. Cheese bread, cheese bread, perfect, perfect. And what got you into baking, Professor? Hector, it's a great question. So, it's, people ask me, Cobrinha, did you like to bake? In the beginning, I didn't. So, it's a necessity. It got me to uh, baking. Okay. So it means that I'm gonna I'm gonna put this first a little Do bit. Your it's thing. still Do your hot, thing. okay? <laughs> still hot here. I'll make sure that. Uh, let me turn this up a little bit. There it is. And tell us what you're adding into into this recipe here. So I'm I'm adding the liquid to the to make a dough, okay? And then when you make the dough, and then you're gonna see that how it's gonna come beautiful, okay? Okay. So let me go slow over here with this. So you add it slowly the liquids. Taking my time over here. Is this one of the uh, things that you like to bake the most, or? And, uh, it, you know, one of one of the things that I like to, to bake the most. Mm -hmm. This is delicious. You know, you can eat it on um, breakfast or after any meal. Yeah, I've had these at a couple of restaurants, but I'm I'm excited to 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 see how this comes out. It's gonna be delicious. You've cooked some uh, some cakes through the years that I've had the pleasure of uh, enjoying when we were up at headquarters in the academy. I did, and I did. I did. I think we have something that uh, back back in the day that if you win uh, uh, Pan Ams or gold medal, uh, I used to bake for you know my students. I don't know if you remember. Yes, that. yes, 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 yes. So, but what you know, your question was, how did I get to uh, baking uh, of necessity? And then the reason why I say that is because um, sometimes we, it was necessity for me, but I went to the uh, bakery mm -hmm. to learn something. Means what? I didn't ask for money, I didn't ask for anything, right? I was, it was necessity for me, I need to learn something, I need to get a professional. And by the time, and the reason why I say that it was necessity for me is because, you know, by the time, that's when uh, Ken and his mom was pregnant, mm. okay? So, and then I need to find, you know, another job to right. make money. And then right. by the time uh, I went to uh, the owner and I told them, listen, I don't want money. I don't want anything. All I want to do here is learn how to bake and become a professional. And what they said, they say, okay, but listen, you know, to make this start long and short, they told me, you're saying that you're going to come to my bakery. You're going to work for free. I said, yes. So I gave myself the opportunity to learn. So I went to the bakery. And I started learning and learning. And three months uh, there, I thought that I was, you know, a good chef already. And then I started, hey, listen, okay, thank you very much for three months and I'm being here. And I started looking for jobs. And then when I was telling people that I want to work at the bakery, they were telling me, how long have you been working at the bakery? I said, three months. They say, are you kidding me? Right. No, man, this takes, you know, years and years and years and years to learn. I said, no, no I can bake. I can do something. Yeah. And they say, nope. Nope, nope. And then, uh, I, again, I need to make money. Um, I went back home, a little sad. Uh, but then, uh, because I gave myself opportunity to learn and work for free for this, uh, this guy for three months, uh, he, was needing, he was needing someone. Mm -hmm. So by the time he needs someone, he's, he first person he was trying to contact was me. Because, you know, I went there and worked right, for free. Right, right, right. And he called me and said, listen, I need someone, but now I'm going to pay you. I said, oh, that's great, right? Even better. I need that right now. Right? 
So that's what I did. I, uh, I went to the bakery and I started working and working and working. Um, about three months passed by and uh, the chef, he had some problems with the owner and uh, you know, he ended up you know, stopping working at the bakery by the time. Um, and the, the owner came to me and said, uh, Rubens, they call me Rubens. Rubens, you know, it's my name, right? nickname is Cobrinha. Uh, can you do exactly the same as the, the chef has been doing in the, you know, um, in the kitchen? I said, there's opportunity for me. I said, yes, I can. But then uh, one hour later, I started asking myself, what did I do? <laughs> I was like, oh, yes, I got it. Yeah, no problem. Right? It's challenging. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. But what did I do, right? It's, uh, but anyways, I went home, I started studying, and then uh, I was supposed to get that at the baker the next day around 6, and I got over there around 3 a.m. just to figure it out, because I listen, it's, you know, I need to, now I told the, the owner that um, I know how to bake, but in the reality, I have just six months of baking. I don't mm -hmm. think it's enough. But anyways, uh, and that day I was praying, I'm gonna repeat that. I was praying to not anyone ask me for you know a birthday cake, because you know you never know, right? Right. And uh, sure, you know they, they asked for they, a birthday they, cake. They, 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 they <laughs> did. So, but then I make I made everything, and then I and then in the end uh, they asked me for the uh, the birthday cake, and I say okay, I can make it. I made the one, but I can I can see that because of all my experience, it wasn't uneven. And I, I knew that. I said, one of my boss sees that, he's going to fire me. Nah. You know, I'm going to lose my job. Uh, he came in, and then he starts saying, oh, good job. I say, no, mm, I don't know what, you know, I mean, good job for what? You know, I, I did something, but not even, even close to what, you know, the chef used to make it. Right. And then he said, so you come to my office. I want to I talk to you. I say, no, yeah, I know already what's going to happen. I'm done. He's going to fire me. <laughs> right? Uh, and then I went to his office and he said, uh, okay, I want to just tell you, you know, good job. And I say, no, I'm just listening. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there is opportunity here. I said, oh, mm. interesting. Wait a second. Ah, What's going yeah, on? Yeah. And he said that, uh, I, do you want to become the chef of this bakery? I say, no. Yeah. Yeah. That's the reason why, you know, I'm here. He said, okay, I'm going to pay you. I'm going to pay for you to go to school. And, uh, and then you can become a chef awesome. of our bakery. They say, do you? Right. And that's what they did. Nice. You know, again, but going back, Hector, this is, this is, it's, it's good to illustrate, uh, illustration this, this part. And the reason why I say that, because most of the time, uh, people, they don't know what they're supposed to do and they're asking for a paycheck already. Right. So you have, sometimes you have to give yourself opportunity. It means what I gave myself an opportunity going over there and working for free to learn and then right. look what you know i got into today i can i can bake, bake. If you have I, a backup plan if correct if i don't if i don't if i can't do jiu-jitsu anymore at least i can use my hands i can do you know uh, i can bake right huh? and that's what we're doing here nice. today that's the story you know yeah. behind the baking and for uh, of course but baking i learned a lot it becomes for me everything in life it becomes a recipe right huh? So that's, that is one, one thing that we use all the time is that we, uh, first you learn the recipe and then you master it. Once you master it, and then you can change. Don't start changing the recipe without mastering it. Right. Makes sense. So nice. I'm gonna just turn this yeah, one a little thing, bit here. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now we we'll want to add the, the eggs. And then there is a technique as well to break the eggs. Okay, show, show me. So look at this, we get uh, this part here. Uh -huh. Can you see well from there? Absolutely. Look, pop like so. Boom. Okay. And then, there it is. We get to this part here. And then you go one by one. There it is. And is this at the point where you started uh, jujitsu come into play or? That's right, I was playing capoeira before. Right. Uh, and I did capoeira for many years. And I, stood, I was still doing uh, capoeira when I started jujitsu. A friend of mine invited me to come over to train jujitsu, but I didn't know what jujitsu was by right. the time. And I was doing capoeira for so long that uh, 
when they invite when he invited me to come over and train uh, uh, Jiu Jitsu for the first time I said yeah I'll, I can come over and I came over I came over to train for the first time with him uh, and I got beat up the first time right uh, in Jiu Jitsu right it's interesting but then you know all of us we like to give to give ourselves excuse and uh, it was Saturday, and I was I, I was training the whole week, Capoeira, hard. Huh? And I thought, you know what? I got beat up today because uh, I was tired. Okay, I was tired Saturday, you know. And right. I told him, and hey, when is the next day? This jujitsu, we can train this jujitsu <laughs> again, right? Right. They say no Monday. I say, you know what? I'm gonna rest a little bit, and I'll come back Monday, you know, sh uh, fresh. I came back on Monday to train, and it was worse. I got beat up for the 16 years old, 17, 16, right. 17 years old, but it was like, I say, you know what? That's what I'm going to do for now on, jiu-jitsu. That's when I started you know, getting into jiu-jitsu. That's I start training and training, and uh, I started a little uh, late in jiu-jitsu, but this, that's another thing, topic I want people to understand. Uh, I start late, but capoeira prepared my body for jiu-jitsu. Right. Uh, you gotta understand that, and I can repeat that, because people think, oh, I, now I'm 25, Cobrini, you know, he made a, 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 the age of 20, I came right. back as well. But you have to understand that your background, and Capoeira, once again, prepared, prepared myself. Prepared you to get to, yeah. Correct. Absolutely. Um, so that's, you know, uh, when I started you know, doing more jiu-jitsu, and I start uh, living a little bit the Capoeira side, and, and keep pushing on towards uh, jiu-jitsu. Mm -hmm. And I started competing uh, little by little. I had six months of jiu-jitsu. I went to Sao Paulo to compete at the Paulista. And I did well. I, uh, I, I was training uh, three times a week by the time, and I made the final. I lost the final as a white belt. So you yeah. competed through white, purple, I did, blue. I did, nice. I did. So then I went back and I said, oh, come, you know, I like that. And I started to take it more serious. Right. Um, and then I started training more, training more, training more, and then it went back again. So then by the time I, I went and I got my blue belt, uh, I won, it was, um, Paulista, it's like, it's really hard competition, especially on you know, that time, uh, by the time I had six fights, uh, I made it to the final, and I lost the final, and then I went back home, and they gave me my, my blue belt, so perfect, got promoted, uh, then I kept, I kept training, and that's when I say, you know what, I want to compete more, and then I start training a little bit harder, you know, for the, the, the competitions as well. Uh, but we can't forget that. I, I, by the time I, I had to do, teach capoeira and then uh, baking still, I, still, I was still working at the, right. ba uh, the bakery. Um, and then to learn more, I start teaching Jiu Jitsu. As soon as I got my blue belt, I start teaching a little bit. That's nice. when I start teaching Michael Lang. Wow, a blue belt. A blue belt. Because, you know, I want to, again, everything, everything for me becomes like a recipe. And I learned that in uh, bakery and baking that, let's see how we're going to, you know, I'm going to do exactly the same. And, uh, mm. and baking, we drill over and over and over, you know, to get the technique. And, and Jiu-Jitsu, I say, you know, it's the same. And a capoeira is the same, too. I brought a lot of things from right. the capoeira as well, because we drill over and over and over, right and left, right and left. And I brought a lot of things from the capoeira. I brought a lot of things uh, uh, from uh, baking to jiu-jitsu as well. Um, and, uh, and then that's when I started, you know, uh, when I started taking a little bit more serious in jiu-jitsu, it was when I got to a brown belt. That's when, you know, it was for me, it was a little bit more serious. Um, let's me continue a little bit here, right, Hector? Yeah, yeah, and absolutely. Then. And I can see, like, a lot of that stuff that you took from your baking, you applied it to your career in jiu-jitsu. I do, I do. Especially like this, there's a system, and then, uh, I mean, there's recipe. I always talking about the recipe of success. It's, uh, you know, it comes from uh, baking. Uh, and I can repeat that over and over and over, you know. Uh, right. We can't, uh, unless we master it, we can modify the recipe. Right. And then in, in baking, what do we do? We have the recipe, let's say, for example, right now, I'm making cheese bread. If I want to modify this, yes, I could because you know I already mastered this. I could modify, but what I do, I leave the recipe, one recipe, the one the one that works right. aside, and then what I do, I started messing it up with the other one, 
And so, you know, I feel like, oh, this one is not working. I go back to the first one, which is, has been working. It's been working. Until, yeah. you know, we figure out another one. And that's what we do in Jiu-Jitsu as well. You want to get better in Jiu-Jitsu, what do we do in Jiu-Jitsu? We go back to the lab, and then we do what? Live <laughs> position training. Right. Yeah, we For drill, sure. live position training, and try to figure it out. I call it on Jiu-Jitsu science as well, as we can figure out a lot of things in Jiu-Jitsu. Right. So tell me a little bit, let's talk a little bit about your Super Grand Slam 2017, right? right. It was an amazing year you had. Tell us a little bit about that year. Uh, I know there's always a preparation before you start, right? Uh, before you start preparing yourself for the first tournament of the year, which was, I think, Europeans at the time. That's correct. Right? That's correct. Tell us a little bit about that, that amazing year you had. It's... Um and to these days, when I think about the Super Grand Slam, Hector, people ask me, did you plan you know, to win everything? And if I tell you, yes, I plan you know, to win everything, I'm lying to you, right? Right. So, of course, I prepared myself, and then I made a uh, plan to compete all the tournaments, but I didn't know. It's so hard to win. Absolutely. So hard to win. I mean, all the competitions... So, and I made a plan. I said, I'm going to run all the competition. And that year, luckily, we had uh, ADCC. Correct. All right, so we started going out one by one, like we do in Jiu-Jitsu. All right. Uh, we went to Europeans first. We won Europeans, no problem. We went to uh, uh, Pan Ams. We Why won not? Pan Ams as well. Then I went all the way to, uh, to Brazil to fight the Brazilian nationals in Sao Paulo. Mm -hmm. But when I got there, I hurt my hamstring. This, this things, you know, I, I don't People don't, yeah, the people it, don't yeah. know about the struggle. I, I hurt my hamstring and then there was a, a dilemma. If I continue the competition, you know, pull out of the competition, it was the week. I went there to start training a little bit and I got hurt. Uh, that day, uh, I brought my mom to watch me for the first time oh, wow. competing. First time ever. 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 Um, and that's when I realized, you know, I can't pull out. You know? Gotta go. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna go. Yeah. And I, I, I fought, and I fought okay. You know, we won the, the Brazilian Nationals. It was okay. Uh, I came back to the United States. It was a month before worlds and I couldn't recover I, I didn't have time and I kept training a little bit and I aggravate a little bit my hamstring and I asked myself okay we're going to compete yes I'm going to compete at worlds and uh, what do you have you know most people don't have experience and I say you know what I'm going to use my experience if you go back and watch at 2017 worlds I couldn't move you're gonna see that oh, something's not wrong. Something's off here. I couldn't move. But then I decided to compete. But again, I'm, the reason why I'm saying that now is because, you know, it passed, it's 2017, but I would never have, if I would lose those fights, I would never give an excuse, say, oh, I know I was hurt. No, right. I decide to compete. I'm telling you right, right now, and people can't understand the struggle we'll go through sometimes, most of the time, you know. So um, I went there, we, uh, we won. And I took, you know, at least a week off, you know, and then I did my uh, rehab. And for ADCC, I was flying. Uh, ADCC, I recuperate my uh, hamstring, my injury, and then uh, we did really well at ADCC. That's when they, that's, th that's, this super grand slam, slam did exist until we made it happen. Made it happen. So, and yeah, and, and nobody, this is, you're the only one in history to, do the super grand slam correct right. correct so and then and that's that's what that's what people they don't talk a lot about it and we you know we don't talk a lot about of the, the super grand slam but uh, yeah it's i think uh, it's something that's very unique and it's gonna take a long time for someone you know to uh, to make you know what to 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 do what we did, we right. have done what we have accomplished right. which is the super grand slam that's true Awesome. I feel like through all these years, uh, competitions have, have changed and the new generation is coming in. What do you, if you had a message for the new generation, what, what, for the new competitors, what would it be, that, what kind of advice would you give them? You could talk a little louder. Yeah, I, um, you know, it's, it's, um, the message I would have for them, Hector, 
first before they win, they have to know how to lose. It's important. Interesting. And and the reason why I say that people say, oh no, I don't want to lose. You know, if you don't, if you don't know, if you don't learn how to lose, know how to deal with the setbacks, because one day you're gonna lose. You know, mm. I have people see me, and one thing I say to people is that. The reason why I say that, I you need to teach people first how to lose because it's life. Right. If you're winning, 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 sooner or later you're going to lose. If you're just winning, 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 someone's going to crash. But if you've been there before and struggle, you'll be okay. And one thing that my life is always has been like that. I have a lot, of, a lot of loss in my career. Uh, but the reason why I consider myself a champion. Not because, you know, I did the Super Grand Slam, I won a World Pan Ams, uh, ADCC, is because I didn't quit. Because it's easier to quit, especially when you face the setback. Right. And that's the one, the reason why I tell people, you have to learn how to deal with the setbacks. Learn how to lose first. Because all of us, you can be winning, you can be winning all the competition for five, six years. I was like four years winning and winning and winning and winning. All of a sudden, oh, boom, I lost. It happens. Right. But how you bounce back, that's what matters. That's the reason why I consider myself a champion. Because I had you know, a lot of loss in my career, but mm -hmm. I didn't give up. True. That and that's the true. message, you know, for the young uh, generation, especially uh, the upcomer fighters. All of us, we're going to taste it, you know, that setback one day and how we deal with it. That's what matters. Nice. That's awesome. Because a lot of them, they see that, oh, man, I'm winning, I'm winning, I'm winning. Yeah, but your time will come. Right? I mean, if Sooner you know, or later. Yeah, even though say, no, oh, you know, I'm preparing myself really well. Yeah. All of us, I did too. Yeah, and absolutely. then again, so for example, I can talk about ADCC. My first ADCC was 2009. I prepared myself really well. I did what I was supposed to do. And then you know myself, you know, people who were with me, they know how I work. Right. And I train. I did, you know, everything what, this, I, what I was supposed to be doing. It. And uh, I went there, 2009 in Barcelona. And guess what? I got all the way to the final and I lost the final. It's okay. I sh shook it off. Uh, I, have, I had to wait for another two years. I waited another two years, and we went back again, 2011 in London. And I, same thing, I did exactly the same. I, of course, even better, I prepared myself. We got there, I lost once again. Right. And then that's when it, come, it becomes uh, people, uh, the surrounders. Uh, uh, the I mean, doubters. The, the doubters, and the people around you, which they love you, but they start telling you, listen, you know, don't go anymore. Why are right. you going there, right? right? Why are you putting yourself through this? I said, what do you mean? Yeah. And then, I, again, I doubt myself, which is, you know, normal. We are human beings. Right. Um, but then the next day, I said, nope. No, no, no. Let's go. Let's wake up again. Let's keep doing again. I have two more years to prepare. And that's what we did. We prepared really well. I started, you know, working on my wrestling with uh, Kenny mm -hmm. Johnson. Yep. Uh, and then we went to Beijing, China. And we fought for 45 minutes, and then guess what? We won our first title at ADCC. And imagine that uh, if I would uh, give up by the time, I would not be here telling you this story, which is gonna right. change a lot of people's lives as well, which is, and the reason why I say that, because sometimes people think just winning, 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 winning. Right. And then that's when we won the first one, and went to Brazil, the second one, and the Finland, 2017, that's when you know, we did the super grand slam, but again, you see the struggle to right. get there. They don't see those parts, and it's yeah, it, and we, want, then, we want to win and win and win. Right. It's, it's I mean again, it's win. It's not. It is. But if you don't know how to lose, it's a problem. Because yes. if you continue competing, because this is addiction, I think all of us we know that, understand that the competitors mm -hmm. we have this type of addiction. Addiction. Uh, we're going to lose. Right. Right. Because it is you know one day we're going to lose, and then mm -hmm. how we deal with the setbacks. That's what. Uh, matters nice nice and now now that you've retired from competition what i've seen you've taken on new hobbies boxing um yeah. uh, tell us a little bit about also the, the swimming thing I, I i saw you doing a, a little bit of workouts in the swimming pool you know hector i think i heard a lot of people saying that uh 
you know, I don't do cross training. Like uh, I do jiu jitsu, just jiu jitsu. But I feel that uh, for my experience, uh, I think I regret a little bit. I think I I, I was too strict. Just jiu jitsu, jiu jitsu condition, jiu jitsu, and then start, start improving a lot of things. You know, beside mm-hmm. of jiu jitsu. But I think those cross training, uh, swimming, uh, mountain mountain bike as well, uh, boxing. I mean, it's a lot of things. It helps your cardio as well. Right. Um, um, I think this, those cross uh, training would help you to elevate your cardio. And if people say, no, I have just to train jiu-jitsu. You know, it helps. But sometimes um, you get burnout, but you don't know, right? Doing a different activities is it, it, sort of like... Uh, Refresh, uh, refresh your mind, and then you can go back again and doing what you need to do. Yeah, so I have been doing boxing for almost two years, and I, I mean, I'm falling in love with boxing. I have been swimming as well. I do a lot of uh, breath workout, uh, breathing workout, and under the water as well, mm-hmm. which helps me big time. Now I'm starting getting you know, into a mountain bike as well. Again, try That's to awesome. explore more, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, this beautiful life. You know, we we have. And not just be, you know, a ton of vision with one thing. Awesome. Well, Cobrina, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to come here and see you bake. I can't wait to taste that. And um, any shout outs or anything you want to, your friends? I want to just, you know, uh, thank you very much for, you know, for uh, having me here doing the podcast with you today. And then I'm going to tell you that I'm super proud of you. What have been building here in uh, Las Vegas uh, and... uh, I want to appreciate you for uh, everything you what you have been doing here. You're doing great things, work with uh, the new generation, and taking jiu-jitsu here in Las Vegas to the next levels because there is levels, and you're taking to the next level. Thank and, you so much. I really community, appreciate it. Appreciate you. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Again, thank you guys for joining us. Keep evolving in everything that you do. Us. Us.